Is the LEGO Technic Ford GT set number 4154 really worth $120? Let's find out. This car is absolutely beautiful and actually has a surprising amount of functionality. But first, let's start with the box. I managed to buy the set from Walmart, so this time it is not a set provided by LEGO. Let's open it up and see what's inside. We get 5 numbered bags, the following wheel discs and tires, the following frames, two of which are the relatively new 3x19 ones. This set brings back the clear engine pieces once again, which were also seen in the Batmobile, and we do get the black shock absorbers, which are simply recolored versions and are not different in their stiffness. We also have the sticker sheet as well as the awesome instruction booklet. Here is the complete parts list for this set. The building process starts with the following differential module, which will be used to connect the rear wheels to the engine. Speaking of the engine, we do build up the clear V6 beauty next, and it simply attaches into the previous module. We add a small beam structure to reinforce it. Some more beams are added to the sides as well as the front. Another beam structure is secured, and now we build up the following 90 degree gear setup, which will be used for the steering. The shock absorbers are attached, giving us fully independent suspension. The large frame secures everything on the bottom, reinforcing the rear structure. Next, we attach this little movable part, which will be later connected to the spoiler. And then, an axle is put through the chassis, so you can control the spoiler from the cabin. The following cylindrical piece is attached, which is actually a glow-in-the-dark element. The first stage is complete. The next bag begins by building up the front section using a small frame and some beams. Then, this little H module with the gear is connected onto the structure. And then, some shock absorber modules are built up, which are attached to the structure. Here, we have the small axle units, and they are attached to the sides. We add a gear rack on top, and the gear rack is connected with some Technic linkers to the axles so that they can steer. A gear is added on top of the rack, and now you can clearly see how this mechanism works. The following beam structures are built up, and they simply attach onto the sides. And now, a sort of marriage happens between the front and rear sections of the chassis. Next, this shrimpy little module is built up, and it is connected to the chassis. It becomes the lever for the spoiler. Some beams are attached to the front, as well as things that allow the door connections. This section uses a flexible axle piece, and it attaches to the dashboard of the car. And then, we add some more decorative things to make it really beautiful. And the steering wheel is connected with a pin. Two seats are built up, which are secured onto the car. Finally, the chassis is reinforced with the 3x19 frames. The second stage is complete. We start with some tiny ones on either side. The following panel roof module is constructed, and it's simply connected right over here. Some tiny panels are added to the front of it, and we add a beam to the back. Some sticks are attached on either side to build up the frame of the car. The rear panel module is constructed, and it attaches just like so. We need to add something to the bottom, so this part is attached to the rear. Next, we take a system brake part, and it's connected to the back. Then, these beautiful panel sections are connected to the sides. Some more beautiful panel modules are constructed, and first, the big ones attach to the sides, then, the small ones go on top of the side modules, creating absolutely gorgeous and incredible shape. Then, we build up the spoiler, and we simply attach it to the moving mechanism. Some tiny modules are connected to the front of the car, followed by some fenders. Then, the headlights module is built up, and it is connected to the car. Another curved panel is connected to the bottom of the front, and then, we attach an openable section to the hood. Some more modules are added to finish off the sides. And then, the following section is connected on top of the engine. Then, some small L-shaped half beams are added on either side. Following that, the doors are built up, which are attached right over here. And they are also secured with some Technic linkers to the L half beams we connected earlier. The wheels are added, and before we look at the functions of the car, make sure to subscribe to get my reviews of all of the March Technic sets. No pressure, though. No pressure. My favorite function of this car is easily the clear V6 engine. It looks absolutely incredible, and in my opinion, clear engine pieces should be used in every single LEGO Technic set that would normally use the grey engine blocks. It is so satisfying to watch, and I could look at it all day. Next, we have Hand of God steering. The turning angle of the front wheels is pretty decent, and of course, the 12th tooth steering gear is removable. And I do wish that instead we had a 20 tooth gear, since that one is larger and much more comfortable to use. In order to access the interior of the car, we need to open these beautiful doors. This is easily one of the best mechanisms of opening doors in modern Technic cars of this scale. The setup is not connected to the actual steering wheel inside of the cabin. Speaking of things inside the cabin, on the other side, 
we will find a lever which is connected to the rear spoiler. The way it deploys is absolutely phenomenal and I greatly appreciate that such a function was implemented in a pretty compact car. The way it works is that on the bottom of the chassis there is a long axle that connects the lever to the rear wing. By the way, that glow in the dark piece that we saw in the building process is barely visible and it doesn't represent anything meaningful in the car. However, it's still always nice to get such pieces even if they're useless in the actual build. Furthermore, this car does actually feature fully independent suspension on all four wheels which is very nice and I do believe that the rear wheels have slightly more travel than the front ones. Also, the front hood is openable revealing the steering mechanism. I love being able to see the internal mechanisms so I greatly appreciate this functionality. In terms of the aesthetics, I think that this car is absolutely beautiful. It captures all the details nearly perfectly of its real life counterpart. The shaping from all the angles is pretty much perfect. It's important to note that the shape of this car is actually much smaller than either the Porsche RSR or the Ferrari 488 GTE. Honestly, this is actually a good thing since it reduces the price while at the same time this car actually got more functionality. So what are the pros and cons of this car? For the pros, we have the phenomenal aesthetics, the good functionality and also the great value. For $120, you get a great blend of looks and features and the deployable spoiler is just an amazing thing. Does this car have any cons? First of all, it does not have a gearbox. The real car uses a 7-speed dual clutch automatic transmission. I'm not saying we need to get anything crazy like that, but I would have liked to see a very basic 2-speed transmission. It would not take up much space in the car. I still wish that LEGO Technic cars were more like the 2011 supercar, not focusing so much on the aesthetics, but bringing impeccable functionality. The 8070 supercar had a 4-function distribution gearbox as well as power functions. I think that in the future, we should get more cars like that, with more functionality at the expense of the aesthetics. Will you be buying the LEGO Technic 4 GT? Please let me know in the comments. Make sure to stay tuned for my reviews of the March sets. This is your Unbreak Me here and I'll see you in the next one.